Hello, and thanks for choosing Pebblehost. Today we'll be taking a look at how to log in to your new dedicated server. Once your server's been purchased with the configuration you're wanting, you'll receive an email labeled your server's new login credentials. If we go ahead and open up this email, you'll see that it's gone ahead and installed CentOS 7 on our Cov 85, which is the name of the dedicated server we have. Um, and it's accessible via SSH in the next minute or two using the following login details. It's gone ahead and provided us with the IP address in which we'll go ahead and need in order to SSH into the server. Uh, it's also provided us with our admin username, which is root, as well as the admin password. So let's go ahead and click manage server here, and this will open up the Synergy control panel um, to where we can start, restart, stop, or even reinstall the operating system on our server. The panel will also give you a little bit of information regarding the network usage, your current usage of the bandwidth. Um, so for this specific configuration, we have a 20 terabyte uh, bandwidth limit. It's also going to show us the current server hardware we have. So we have a Xeon E3 1270 with 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM and a 240 gig SSD. Right underneath the server hardware is the uh, server name once again. So as you can see, COV85, as well as the IP address that we can use, uh, which would be 194.213.315. Now, whenever we initially configured the server, we selected we wanted CentOS 7 installed. But for whatever reason, if we want to change that in the future, we can simply click Operating System Reload, select the profile, and then select the operating system we want. Right under the Power Control tabs, you'll see a thing that says Open Supermicro IPMI Web Control Panel. Now, IPMI stands for Intelligent Platform Management Interface. This is essentially a direct connection to your dedicated server that will provide you a bit more control than just SSHing into it. This will act as if you're sitting in front of the server controlling it with a keyboard and mouse. In order to launch IPMI, we'll go ahead and click Launch KVM, and this is going to generate a Java file that we can go ahead and save. And once this is actually downloaded, we'll go ahead and open it up. Now, by default, you may not be able to open this up. This is because we'll actually need to go ahead and download Java to our system. Because we are running in a virtual machine, uh, we can go ahead and just simply download Java. Um, and we'll just go ahead and grab the latest version. Once Java has been installed, you can go ahead and close the prompt there. Go back to our original file here, and we'll go right click, open with, and we'll look for more apps, um, but it may be selected right here. So Java Web Launcher, we'll go ahead and click open. And it's going to prompt us with a security warning. However, we can go ahead and uh, safely continue this, and you may get the application blocked. Now, this is actually completely normal, and there's not much you can uh, do in order to prevent this from happening. The only way around this is to actually open up your Java configuration settings. And we're actually going to need to add a whitelist um, for the IP. So we can go to security, click edit site list, and we'll click add. And we'll need to type in the address. So in this case, it will be the address listed here. And we'll simply type HTTPS colon slash slash 77.741972422 and then a um, colon 1334. Now, this will vary for you, um, this IP address here. But once you go ahead and add that in, we can go ahead and reopen the application. And same thing, we're just going to open it with the Java Web Viewer. It will prompt us with another security warning. However, this time it will pop us up with the actual IPMI or KVM viewer, in which it'll prompt us to be able to log in. IPMI will not close out even if we reboot our server. So if we go ahead and do a cold reboot uh, and reboot the server, um, we should see here in a moment for this to go ahead and reboot. You see it said powering off. We'll temporarily actually lose signal because the system is turning off. Um, but here momentarily, we should see the signal come back. Okay, so as you can see, it's gone ahead and started the booting process. So now that the server has been booted, uh, we can go ahead and just close out of this because we aren't going to necessarily want to, uh, like I said before, run commands through IPMI as it is a bit annoying to do so. So we'll go ahead and X out of IPMI. And the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and open up our web browser and go to putty.org. Now putty is an SSH and Telnet client um, obviously, we will be using it for SSH. We'll go ahead and download the 64-bit installer, save the file, and once it's been saved, we'll go ahead and 
open that up and install PuTTY to our computer. Keep in mind there are other SSH options out there such as Mobex, Term, Termius, and a plethora of other ones. However, for the simplicity of this tutorial, we'll go ahead and just use PuTTY. So in order to launch PuTTY once it's installed, we'll go ahead and just type in PuTTY within our search window there and bring it up. And now it's going to ask us for the host name of our server. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and just copy the usable IP here um, or the IP allocation IP and paste that into PuTTY. We'll leave the port set to 22 and go ahead and click open. It's once again going to ask us to uh, trust the connection. Uh, we'll go ahead and click yes and ask us for a username. Um, we'll go ahead and type in root and we'll need to go ahead and grab our password as well. And like previously shown, that was in our email. So we'll go ahead and copy the password and to paste it in, we're actually going to right click on our mouse. Now, nothing, as you can see, will be shown here. Um, and that's because this is how Linux kind of protects your password uh, within an SSH terminal. But if we go ahead and click enter, and as you can see, once we hit enter, it went ahead and logged us into our server. Now, once logged into your dedicated server, one of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do is update all of the default packages by typing in the update command for your operating system. I'm gonna type in yum update, and then we're going to type a dash Y to accept and install every single update it has available. So we'll go ahead and click enter on this, and it's going to go through, check all of our packages for updates and update them as needed. So as you can see, the update has finished. If we kind of scroll up within our terminal, you can see all of the packages that it updated. Now, in order to clear all of this out of our screen, because we really don't need to see this anymore, we can type in clear, or if you wanna leave it, it doesn't really matter. Now that we're done updating, we're going to go ahead and install Apple Release. Now, Apple Release stands for Extra Packages for Enterprise Linux, and we can install it by using yum install apple dash release and add a dash Y to that. And this will go ahead and install it. And the second thing we're going to install is htop, and HTOP is essentially a task manager of equivalent uh, for Linux. So we can go ahead and install HTOP. And in order to run HTOP, we'll simply type in the command HTOP. And this will pull up, like I said previously, a uh, task manager equivalent, so to speak. So as you can see, we're currently selected over CPU. And we can see all of the current tasks that are using any sort of percentage of CPU. Um, because obviously, this is a fresh system. There's not too much going on but we can also see each individual core, as well as our memory usage, as well as swap usage. This system, like we've said previously, has 16 gigs of RAM. However, some of that is reserved for the system, so we'll see the 15.5 gigs of RAM there. Now, in order to close out of HTOP, we can do one of two things. We can either go ahead and click the quit button here uh, if your terminal supports this, or we can go ahead and click F10 to close out of HTOP. Now that we've installed a few basic packages, as well as updated all of our packages, as well as the kernel to the most up-to-date version, we're going to go ahead and reboot our system. We'll go ahead and type in reboot. And by typing in reboot and hitting enter, uh, you'll see remote side has unexpectedly closed the network connection. We can click OK. Now, for whatever reason, we don't want to reboot the server via the reboot command. We can also do it here by clicking power and clicking the cold reboot. We also have power on, soft power off, hard power off as well. And instead of changing the boot device through IPMI, we can also change the boot device here. We have PXE, disk, or the BIOS. That's gonna wrap it up for this tutorial. If you have any questions regarding anything we've covered in this video, feel free to join the Peblos Discord and we'd be more than happy to help you there.